When one imagines the Sahara, it's often as an endless and inhospitable expanse of shifting sands. But believe it or not, there was once a time when this very desert painted a vastly different picture. Instead of the barren dunes that stretch beyond the horizon today thousands of years ago, this same land was verdant and full of life. Between 10,000 to 5,000 years ago, the Sahara was not a desert in the traditional sense. It was a thriving and lush region, characterized by vast grasslands, teeming with wildlife. Meandering rivers quenched the land and vast lakes shimmered under the sun, serving as focal points of life and civilization. This dramatic transformation from desert to grassland was primarily due to periodic shifts in the Earth's axis and orbit, bringing monsoon rains further north and turning arid landscapes into fertile plains. Humans, always resourceful, quickly took advantage of this bountiful environment. The land supported large communities, leading to the rise of rich cultures and the establishment of intricate trade networks. With water being the primary life source, settlements often sprang up around rivers and lakes. As these communities grew, so did their interactions with neighboring regions, leading to an exchange of goods, ideas and innovations. But like all good things, this green phase was transient. As millennia passed, the Earth's climatic patterns shifted once again, the once abundant rains became sporadic, and the vast bodies of water began to shrink. However, the memories of this era weren't entirely lost. They were etched in the very soil and rocks of the region, waiting to tell their tale to future generations. Delving deeper into the heart of the Green Sahara, one can uncover tales of once prosperous kingdoms and civilizations. Their existence, now buried beneath layers of sand, serves as a testament to the adaptability and ingenuity of ancient peoples. While today's Sahara might seem desolate, the remnants of these kingdoms whisper stories of a time when it was a cradle of life and culture. The Nubians, for example, were a prominent group that once thrived in the region that is now modern-day Sudan. Bordering ancient Egypt, they established a series of powerful kingdoms known for their monumental architecture and art, Far from being isolated, the Nubians had significant interactions with their northern neighbors, trading goods, sharing ideas, and sometimes even clashing in warfare. But what's particularly astonishing is how they flourished in a landscape that would eventually turn against them. Then there's the Garamante civilization, which sprang up in what's now Libya. Instead of massive temples or pyramids, they're best known for their advanced underground irrigation system, Called the Fogaras, these networks of tunnels tapped into underground water tables, bringing life-sustaining water to the surface. Such ingenuity not only underscores their understanding of the environment, but also their determination to harness it. But perhaps one of the most enigmatic and lesser-known civilizations was the Tichit Walata complex in modern-day Mauritania. Here, Settled between the 4th and 2nd millennium BC, people built thousands of stone settlements in a region that today seems completely inhospitable. The remnants of their structures, mainly circular stone walls, tell a story of organized societies with a clear understanding of urban planning. However, as the Sahara's climate began its inexorable shift back to arid conditions, these civilizations faced immense challenges. Water sources dwindled, and once fertile lands turned barren, these environmental changes, combined with external pressures and internal dynamics, led to the decline, migration or transformation of these once great societies. Yet, they weren't completely forgotten. Centuries later, their legacy can still be traced, not just in the physical ruins they left behind, but in the shared cultural and historical tapestry of the regions they once inhabited. To truly comprehend the expanse of human history across the Sahara, one must look to the ancient canvases that dot the landscape, petroglyphs. These are not mere doodles or random etchings, but intricate works of art, revealing the soul of ancient societies and capturing snapshots of life from bygone eras. Found etched into the exposed rock faces, these artworks span vast periods, ranging from the Neolithic era to more recent times. They serve as silent testimonies to the ever-changing environment and human adaptability, the meticulous carvings depict a variety of scenes, from wildlife and hunting escapades to ritual dances and everyday communal activities. Each intricate line and curve, painstakingly carved into the rock, 
tells a story of a time when the Sahara wasn't a vast desert, but a vibrant and lively place. Animals like giraffes, elephants, and antelopes, now only found far south of the Sahara, feature prominently in these petroglyphs. Their depictions are a stark reminder of the green Sahara's lush past. These art pieces tell us about the biodiversity of the region, where grasslands and lakes provided habitats for an array of wildlife and where humans, living amidst nature's bounty, revered and respected their animal counterparts. But beyond showcasing the environment, petroglyphs delve into the realm of spirituality and the metaphysical. There are symbols and patterns whose meanings have been lost to time, leaving us with puzzles waiting to be deciphered. Circles, spirals, and abstract human figures make one wonder about the spiritual beliefs, cosmological views, and mythologies that might have influenced such creations. Were they ritualistic symbols, representations of celestial events, or perhaps communal stories passed down generations? The distribution of these petroglyphs across the Sahara also suggests a connected network of cultures and communities. While some images are unique to specific regions, others exhibit similarities that hint at shared beliefs, trade routes, or intercultural exchanges. In essence, the petroglyphs of the Sahara serve as a bridge. They connect us to the ancients, enabling us to peek into their lives, aspirations, and beliefs. They remind us that beneath the Sahara's sun-baked sands lie stories of perseverance, artistry, and human endeavor, waiting to be rediscovered and appreciated anew. The allure of the lost city of Atlantis has captivated minds for centuries, an advanced civilization that seemingly vanished overnight. But did you know that the Sahara too conceals its own Atlantean secrets? Beneath the ever-shifting dunes and scorched plains, traces of once thriving settlements lay hidden. These aren't mere remnants of small tribes, but of entire civilizations that blossomed amidst the greenery before the unforgiving desert took over. One of the most enigmatic of these lost cities is the ancient city of Taman Raset. Located in today's southern Algeria, Taman Raset was once a bustling hub of trade, art, and academia. Imagine broad avenues lined with intricately designed buildings, public squares where scholars debated the topics of the day, and bustling bazaars displaying goods from across the ancient world. A close to Taman Raset, Archaeological excavations have uncovered remnants of sophisticated irrigation systems. These systems not only suggest a high degree of agricultural expertise, but also attest to the existence of a more hospitable climate. For these irrigation systems to function, there must have been abundant water sources, perhaps even rivers and lakes. Yet what led to the city's decline? Climate change, marked by a shift from regular rainfall to prolonged dry periods, played a major role. As water sources dwindled, sustaining large urban centers like Taman Raset became increasingly challenging. The city's populace facing water scarcity and declining agricultural yields would have been compelled to migrate, seeking more fertile lands. Over time, the unforgiving sands of the Sahara reclaimed the city, obscuring it from human memory. Another hidden jewel of the Sahara is the Nabta Playa, Located in southern Egypt, this site predates the famous Stonehenge. Nabta Playa, believed to be an astronomical observatory, provides evidence that the ancients of the Sahara had a deep understanding of celestial movements. The stones are aligned with particular stellar configurations, possibly helping them mark seasonal changes, essential for nomadic communities dependent on animal husbandry. In a way, the Sahara's own Atlantean cities mirror the overarching human story, one of resilience, adaptability, and a relentless spirit. These cities lost to the annals of time were crafted by civilizations with dreams, aspirations, and an innate desire to understand the world around them. They are a testament to humanity's undying spirit to not just survive, but thrive, even in the most challenging of conditions. And as we unearth these lost cities, we do not just discover stone relics, but stories, cultures and legacies that redefine our understanding of human history. Imagine a Sahara teeming with life, where large lakes dotted the landscape, providing sustenance to diverse ecosystems, a place where verdant grassland stretched as far as the eye could see, and large herds of animals roamed freely. This might seem like a figment of fantasy, but in reality it's a blast from the past.
Several millennia ago, the Sahara was not the barren desert we see today but a thriving green expanse. This vast green Sahara was home to countless species of flora and fauna. It sustained early human civilizations, allowing them to lead settled lives centered around agriculture and fishing. Artifacts like ancient pottery shards and fishing tools found buried beneath the desert sands give credence to this era of abundance. So what transformed this lush paradise into the vast desert that stretches over 10 million square kilometers today? The answer lies in the intricate dance of the Earth's axis and its impact on global climate patterns. Our planet wobbles on its axis, a phenomenon known as axial precession. This wobbling has a cyclic pattern occurring roughly every 26,000 years. As the Earth wobbles, it influences the amount of sunlight reaching different parts of the world, significantly impacting regional climates. Around 10,000 years ago, during one such wobble, the Sahara received increased sunlight, resulting in intensified monsoon rains that turned the arid region into a verdant oasis. However, the dance continued. As the cycle of axial precession progressed, sunlight reaching the Sahara gradually reduced, the once torrential rains became infrequent, and the large lakes that had been the lifeline for so many began to dry up. The vegetation that thrived under the generous rains found it hard to survive. Grasslands receded, giving way to expanding sands. As the green faded, Animals and people migrated to more hospitable regions or adapted to the emerging arid environment. The transformation from green to barren didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual process unfolding over several millennia. As the landscape transformed, so did the civilizations that called it home. They adapted, innovated and sometimes relocated, continually molding their lives according to the capricious whims of nature. In the end, the Sahara's story of desertification is not just a tale of climate shifts, but also a testament to nature's ever-changing canvas and humanity's age-old struggle and resilience against the relentless march of time and change. And as always, thanks for watching.